three minutes and 30 seconds into flight. Now this is a version one fairing, unlike the slightly wider version two we flew late last month from Vandenberg. T-minus six minutes, 45 seconds. We're starting to hear activity on the countdown net. We did our standard go, no, go poll. That was held at about T-minus two hours. We began loading propellants at T-minus 70 minutes. Fuel is currently loaded on the second stage as planned, and we are finishing up the first stage. We are in the middle of about a one-minute top-off that began 30 seconds ago, and we've just heard the call out. The stage one fuel load is complete. Liquid oxygen loading is continuing on both stages. That'll wrap up between the T-minus three and T-minus two minute marks. ISPASAT satellite team is go for launch. They confirmed at T-minus 14 minutes they were on internal power. No further activities from here. The Air Force range is ready to support. The areas are cleared around Slick 40 for flight. The weather, both at ground level and upper altitude winds, is good and go for launch. So with all stations indicating go for launch, Let's take a closer look at today's satellite. We live in a hyper-connected world, surrounded by information and with consumer habits that are oriented towards greater freedom of movement and a demand for increased flexibility, reliability and capacity in communications. We need connectivity of the highest quality wherever and whenever needed regardless of whether we are located in a remote area or we are moving at high speeds. To respond to this growing demand, Hispasat launches the Hispasat 30W6 satellite. From its orbital position at 30 degrees west, Hispasat 30W6 will replace and expand the capacity of Hispasat 30W4 and thus complete the current phase of the company's growth plan. Hispasat 30W6 has beams that point to the Mediterranean, Europe, Spain, Northeast Africa, and the American continent. And it increases the operator's KA and KU band offering, as well as incorporates a new beam in the C band. With this configuration, Hispasat 30W6 will provide broadband internet access to help bridge the digital gap in North Africa, Latin America, and the Iberian Peninsula. Reinforce the distribution of audiovisual content in Latin America and provide connectivity in high speed trains and maritime services in the Caribbean and Mediterranean. Hispasat 30W6 is the fourth satellite of the Hispasat fleet built by Space Systems L'Oreal on its 1300 platform and it involved the participation of Spanish companies to manufacture components and develop the ground segment. Furthermore, Hispasat 30W6 incorporates a KA band receiver demonstrator based on photonic technology and its modules have been designed by DAS Photonics and TRIO. With services similar to those of the current receivers available on the market, the application of photonic technology to these types of components will make it possible to significantly reduce its mass and volume in the future. The launch of Hispasat 30W6 will be carried out on a SpaceX Falcon 9 vehicle from the Kennedy Space Center facilities in Cape Canaveral, Florida. From its orbital position at 30 degrees west, it will provide high-quality telecommunication services during its more than 15 years' lifetime. Hispasat 30W6, growing connectivity. T-minus two minutes and 44 seconds. We're counting down to an on-time launch. Everything looks good on Falcon 9. 
First stage propellant load liquid oxygen has just completed. Second stage is wrapping up. The strongback has moved away the degree and a half from the Falcon 9. We're getting ready to pressurize for flight. Next activity at T-minus one minute. The flight computer on the Falcon 9 will go into startup, taking over control of the countdown. The ISPASAT satellite team, they are go for launch. The range is go. The weather is go for launch. And so now at T-minus two minutes and 10 seconds, we're going to listen in to the last minutes of the countdown of Falcon 9 with ISPASAT 30W6. Stage 2 locks load complete. Falcon 9 is on internal power. Vehicles in self line. M1D fugably complete. AFTS is ready for launch. M1D engine show complete. Ground gas close out is complete. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 2 is pressed for flight. LD is go for launch. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Vehicle is supersonic. We're just over one minute into flight. Falcon 9 is passing through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We've Vehicle is experiencing max Q. You've heard the call out. We're now experiencing maximum dynamic pressure, where the velocity of the first stage and the density of the Earth's atmosphere combine to create the greatest loads on the rocket. We're through that period. Merlin engines have throttled back up to full power. Propulsion indicates nominal. Power and telemetry also reported nominal. Next major activity, just a little under a minute from now, we'll have the main engine, engine cutoff, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. T plus two minutes into flight. We've got about another half a minute left in the first stage burn. Trajectory looks good. We're going right down the middle of the track. We've got a great view from the ground looking up at the Merlin engine plume on the Falcon 9.
Main engine cutoff with the nine Merlin engines in about 10 seconds. Eco. Stage separation. Good recognition. Coming up on three minutes into flight, you hear the applause here from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. We've had a good first stage shutdown, a stage separation, and a good ignition of the upper stage engine. Right after ignition, you may have seen a couple of pieces of metal coming off the nozzle. That's normal. Those are stiffeners that go around the bottom of the nozzle for use in transporting on the ground. They fall off as we go into flight. Next event coming up in about 10 seconds, we're going to wait and watch for fairing separation. Second stage is following nominal trajectory. Fairing separation confirmed. Again, the applause, you saw a good payload fairing separation. The fairing separating into the two halves and falling away. We're coming up on four minutes into flight. GNC reports trajectory is good. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda, indicates that the Falcon 9 telemetry is also being acquired by our ground tracking station in Bermuda. Upper stage engine power continues to be constant. Thrust to the Merlin Vacuum D engine is good. We're coming up on T plus five minutes into flight. Looking at the trajectory map, Falcon 9 continues to go right along the planned path, heading east from Cape Canaveral into the first of two orbits planned for this evening. Now currently, we're planning to burn that upper stage engine for just about another three and a half minutes. We may also hear call outs in a little more than a minute of entry burn. The first stage, as I mentioned, will go through the pre-programmed re-entry and landing sequence, but there's no drone ship station out in the stormy Atlantic to be able to catch the first stage. Coming up on six minutes into flight, we've got another just over two and a half minutes to go on the second stage engine. Very quiet on the net. Falcon 9 second stage with the ISPASAT satellite attached, performing nominally as we head down range from Cape Canaveral. Currently second stage uh, will be accelerating up to about four Gs. As a reminder, the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite as Elon has tweeted out, is massing over six metric tons. That's over 6,000 kilograms, and that is the largest geostationary satellite we've Stage ever flown. One, has saved. Given the size, as you Stage one, entry burn has started. You heard entry burn start in the background here. As I mentioned, going through the pre-programmed sequence. And we have shutdown of stage one on the entry burn. That'll leave its landing burn coming up in about a minute and a half. Second stage continuing to run. Everything looking good on stage two.
Seven and a half minutes into flight. The glowing nozzle on the upper stage engine, that's expected. Shows the engine's running just like we uh, want it to be. We've got cameras on the back of the second stage giving us these live views. We're about a minute away from Seco, second stage engine cutoff number one. That will leave us in a parking orbit. Once we get engine shutdown, we'll wait for the guidance engineer to confirm that we have a good orbit. Vehicle is in terminal guidance. We heard a call out vehicle and terminal guidance. We're getting ready to go into orbit. Coming up on 4G's acceleration. Thank you. Flight termination system on stage two is saved. Seco. We've got shutdown of the second stage engine. The completion of the first burn on time. Waiting to hear a call out. Good orbital insertion. And there it is. We've heard good orbital insertion of the second stage, still carrying the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite. We're into the first orbit. We're going into a coast phase now. We'll wait until the orbit takes us over the equator on West Africa before we relight the upper stage engine and that'll put us into the geostationary transfer orbit. Now before we get to that phase, we've got a little bit more video that'll give you some insight. Acquisition of signal, HPK. We're at T plus 32 minutes and five seconds. Falcon 9 second stage and satellite are in the desired geostationary transfer orbit. We've actually got a very accurate orbit that we achieved. Next up, we're gonna see satellite deployment. And this 
mode, the flight computer will send redundant commands to open the separation system that holds the satellite to the second stage. Small compressed springs will then push the satellite away from the second stage and that will complete deployment. We're expecting that deployment coming up in about 15 seconds. Camera showing alternating views between the nozzle of the second stage engine, the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite on top of the second stage payload adapter. Spacecraft separation confirmed. And the cheering from the late night team here in Hawthorne. We have telemetry and video confirmation of the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite successfully separated from the Falcon 9. It's been a great mission for Falcon 9, our 50th Falcon 9 flight. Countdown was on time. We launched right at the opening of the window. First stage flight was normal. Second stage went through two burns. Both of them gave us good orbit insertion. And then finally, as you just saw, satellite deployment right on time. Nice view from the camera on top of the second stage. So that's going to end our webcast for this evening. We'd like to thank our customer, ISPASAT, for their confidence in SpaceX, the Eastern Range for their support, the Federal Aviation Administration, our commercial licensing agency, and of course you, the viewer, for clicking on the link to follow us. Now if moving humanity out into the solar system appeals to you, please check SpaceX.com careers for openings at our factory and launch and test sites. Look for updates on our next mission on social platforms and our website. And with that, wish you a good night from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, United States of America, planet Earth.